But more importantly, we're going to focus on watermelon seeds and the biological functions and the health benefits. There have been a number of you who've been putting out there, hey, Dr. Shiva, what's the difference between the watermelons with seeds and the watermelons without seeds? And we'll go to that. Maria, for example, says, Dr. Shiva, I always buy the seeded watermelons. I always eat the seeds too. Yeah, me too. I find it really weird eating the watermelon without the seeds. They don't feel right. When I was young growing up in India, I used to eat the seeds and my one of my uncles used to try to scare me. He says, oh, you know, when you eat those watermelon seeds, it's going to grow a big watermelon bush inside of you. Anyway, but I love the taste of the watermelon seeds. What I really enjoy is taking watermelons with the seeds and blending it. You get a sort of a creamy flavor. It's very tasty. But anyway, I'll come back to that. But Today, we're going to cover watermelon seeds. You're going to understand what are the molecules in watermelon seeds, how the cardiovascular system works, and how they interact. Uh, someone said a very Indian joke. Yeah, Jacob George, he's from India. Yep, it's true. But we also want to share with you that we have various research initiatives, as you know, in our movement, be it the immune health, be it on the elections, be it on free speech, uh, many, many things, Ukraine, Russia. But on the Food is Medicine series, we also want to make everyone aware, as I shared before, how much superficial knowledge that doctors get. Basically, they're not free. Most doctors have golden handcuffs. They're dissuaded to teach their patients about nutrition. It's unfortunate. And then we're going to talk about the health possibilities of watermelon seeds, their mechanisms of action, the clinical evidence, and then where you source it from. As a part of the sourcing, let me first of all begin, how do you get seedless watermelons? How does that occur? I think 75%, it's very hard now to get seeded watermelons. When I was in India recently, it's easy to get it there. But the way that they make seedless watermelons is they take the pollen from a male plant, which has 22 chromosomes, okay? And then through a chemical process, the flower of the female plant, they chemically alter it. It's not genetic modification, but it's a chemical intervention that that female plant has 44 chromosomes, 44 chromosomes. And then you have the male, which has 22 chromosomes. And remember, if you go to the basis of the reproduction process during reproduction, half of these chromosomes, right? So 22 become 11 from the male and the 44, you get 22, which is half and they crossbreed to get 33. It's called a triploid, okay? Typically you'd get 22, right? 22. 22 from the male and the female, half and half, 11, 11, you get 22. So this is a weird type of watermelon that really cannot really fully reproduce. And it has those white, mushy seeds. It does have seeds, but they're the white ones. So that's how the process takes place. It's a type of breeding, but it's a chemical alteration. It is modified. It's not genetically modified, just to be clear on that. I think we should all go back to the nice watermelon seeds, which have the black seeds in them. And you're going to learn why it has a lot of nutrition today. Okay. But that's what we're going to cover. We're going to cover the truth, the science, cardiovascular system, watermelon seeds. We're going to go back to the attack on freedom that takes place because of big pharma not really wanting to educate people as food as medicine, as well as the golden handcuffs and doctors. And then we're going to go to the health possibilities of watermelon. All right. 